we are live, but they can hear us, but we'll be live in two minutes. <laughs> Let's keep that in mind. Hey, welcome, guys. Sorry about the delay. We're going to start here in our minute and a half. We had um, one of the worst issues that could possibly happen. Uh, one of the cameras are just not turning on. So we're going to do this a little old school. It's going to look a little different today, guys. So just forgive us. But it's all good. It's just going to be a nice conversation with uh, Margarita Monet right now. And uh, we won't be able to pull up the music as much. But we'll give you guys all the links so you can check out our music and everything. But we'll be right with you guys. Edge of Paradise, by the way. Edge of Paradise. I'm curious what spaceship you're in right now. <laughs> Parked in Oak Park. Oak Park. <laughs> Margarita's camera works great. Don't worry. My camera is nice and broken. <laughs> She's still looking good. Thank you. You too. All right. Oh, no, we got more issues. Yay. <laughs> guys, let me know if the stream's skipping on you guys or not. All right, guys. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to our weird, weird little setup we got going on today. <laughs> we got Margarita with us today from Edge of Paradise Hello. with some uh, huge Hello. news. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks. For always great to chat with you. So happy to be here. Yeah, it's it's we always have a blast. I, we have a couple. We have like about four hours worth of conversation. You guys can check out too after this podcast. Um, we how long has it been? We met like couple years ago now right since the beginning of the channel i think yeah it was definitely before covid so yeah um yeah around 2019 i think yeah that was that was when we um first met and we we're talking about the your band and you guys are doing so much now uh you just sent me that i just saw that picture with you with herman lee which was insane uh, so you guys performed on stage right yeah, we did a, a cover song uh, at the um, heavy metal seventy thousand that's seventy thousand tons of metal cruise. Okay. So, at the jam session that they have, and we did an Iron Maiden song. So that, yeah, it was fun. That is so awesome. Yeah, you got it. Looked like a blast. How did that come about? Can you tell us? Uh, I think it's the um, you know on the cruise the people that organize these jams. They reached out um, to different people that are playing because we were playing on the cruise, so it was Dragon Force. So they reached out to different members of different bands and put them together. Um, and you learn this song and you go on stage and you perform it without rehearsing or anything like that. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's a, it was a cruise? What was the cruise for? Uh, so it's called 70,000 Tons of Metal, mm -hmm. which is cruise that goes in the uh, from florida to the bahamas and uh i believe it was some uh, um, end of january and uh it's a ton of bands on their night which was playing of a gray camelot oh, wow. um and every band plays twice there's four stages so you kind of switch off the stage um and it's a lot of fun yeah, oh. if you ever get a chance to do it, it's so much fun. That is wild. That is wild. So I didn't even realize there was anything like that, like a cruise with metal bands on there just like jamming out. It's not the only one. There, there's that one and there is, I think, one that's called Heavy Metal Cruise and there is, um, there's a Rock Cruise, there's a Kiss Cruise. There's a ton of cruise ships now where bands play, so... So was it your whole band or was it just members? Uh, they just invite a bunch of different members that get together. 
No, it was the whole band. So all bands played. So we played twice, mm. and then they had night, or you know, I believe it's like two hours or three hours. Basically, one of the shows is the jam. They call mm. it All Star. And uh, that's when they get different members from different bands to do cover songs, basically. Oh, that's so cool. That That is awesome. Well, congratulations. And now, what? tell everyone what's happening now in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so we, well, recently we released Hologram, mm. and we went on to the coil. Then uh, we got back. We actually have a few more songs now recorded that we're going to release pretty soon as well. Mm. But we're getting ready to go with Dragon Force, Amaranth, and then a War of Steel. And then the so the tour goes um all the way through the East Coast. It goes up to Canada. Um and then we're going to Mexico City to play a festival in December. And Alice Cooper is on it, except uh look in the coral, Camelot, it's a ton of bands. It's in Mexico City called Life After Death Festival. So, actually, we just recently played a festival that Baby Metal was supposed to play at, but uh, because of weather, they canceled a couple of yeah. days, but we got to play. Um, because I <laughs> I saw, you know, I remember you were doing a lot with ba Baby Metal, so I kind yeah. of thought it. <laughs> oh, oh, you saw that? <laughs> like, yeah, that was that's still insane. I can't believe that happened, but... um. Uh, it was Rock Ridge, right? <laughs> All that catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you get to play with Baby Metal soon. That'd be awesome. I think in the festival that you're doing, you're playing with another big band. Um, well, you're playing with a band that I follow a lot. They're getting big. It's Hanabie. I think you're going to be playing with them in Mexico City. Okay. I'll have to yeah. make sure we see them. I highly recommend you check it out. I think you would dig it. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a really, really, really good band. Um. I don't know what you would call it, but yeah, it's it's good. <laughs> it's good metal. How about that? We'll just leave it at that. Um, so you guys ended up playing the Blue Ridge Rock Festival. We did. Uh, we had the only issue we had is that it was over 100 degrees mm. and <laughs> a very special shade of red for a few hours. Uh. <laughs> uh, but other than that, we had a lot of fun. Um, so many awesome fans. We got to do a meet and greet. Um, people that you know worked with us on the stage were awesome. Yeah, we had a really good time. And then a few hours later, lightning struck the stage and then it started raining and half what? of us got stuck. Yeah, so... <laughs> what? So it all kind of started to get eventful. Then the next day, they were... They, um, we're able to have more bands play. Mm -hmm. Slipknot play so a testament. We got to see a lot of bands pretty much all all day. Um, bands were able to play, but then it started raining again. So Saturday and Sunday got canceled. Mm, okay, so there was a lot of rain then at this festival, right? There was, yeah. There was definitely weather. So, but but what happened is, like for example, on Sunday there wasn't much rain, but there was already quite a bit of damage, and uh, I'm I'm not sure what happened, but I think it's just there was no real because the storm came suddenly, and I guess there was no real expectation to um, see how to host everybody because there was a lot of people, mm -hmm. and then some people getting stuck. So it's just I guess for everybody's safety, because some people were stuck um, to get them out in time, you know, and. Mm. I don't, it's hard to say. I mean, there's a lot of speculation to exactly what was going on, but definitely weather was a big part of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're definitely twisting it another direction, which I've seen some pictures. It does like the like trash cans overflowing and stuff. And just to keep in mind, a lot of festivals I go to, the trash cans are overflowing, but <laughs> or stuff yeah. like that. But. Yeah, I think maybe, I mean, there was a lot of people, so um, maybe there was not enough space for as many mm. people. You never know. Yeah. 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 There were, there, there was a lot of things that were brought up that it was just crazy, but you said lightning strike the stage or like, or struck near it. Oh, actually. So there is a law or if a lightning strikes within certain distance, 
it cancels for the next few hours. But in this case, lightning struck the stage and uh, it grounded everything. Oh, uh, a lot of got damaged. Yeah, so the crew worked overnight to restore for the next day. For the next day, but yeah, lightning did stri strike the stage. <laughs> that is insane. That is insane. So it, oh man, see, it seems like it's a lot of things. Then it was probably like the rain, the storm, bad work conditions got worse. You know, it sounds like a lot of stuff just went down. Yeah, because there's a lot of people um talking about it, like a uh, tank to tech um. He was mentioning some things that happened, I think, more behind the scenes of how it was being ran pretty, really, pretty crazy. But for you guys, you guys didn't really experience much of that, right? I didn't because we played on Thursday before the weather turned. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, issue with us. I mean, it was it was extremely hot. But, you know, these days, I feel like everywhere you go is hotter than normal. <laughs> A little <laughs> like L.A., it's been insanely hot this summer. And, you know, in North Carolina, well, it's actually in Virginia, but we stayed in North Carolina mm -hmm. and we drove up festival. But, yeah, it just, you know, very hot, very humid. Mm -hmm. um, so that was very tough to play <laughs> um, when it's so hot. But, um, you know, we we had a lot of fun still. Yeah. You survived it. How? What do you do? Do you do anything different or special when you're singing in certain kinds of weather? Because for one, by the way, if you guys haven't heard her sing, she has a crazy range. I just I forgot how high your voice is. I was going back listening to um, the newer songs you released, and I can't remember which course. I had it pulled up before I had all these tech issues. Um, but you go so high, and it's ridiculous. And I'm just thinking, you're going through all these temperature changes and stuff. What do you do, like if it's a hotter day or or a colder day? Is there any special prep ups you do for your voice to get prepared for that? Yeah, well, you know, honestly, it's actually easier to sing when it's hotter for mm -hmm. your voice. But then physically, <laughs> that's a different story. <laughs> uh, I was sweating, or, you know, your heart's pounding. You're like, am I going to make it through this next song? But for your voice, it's actually comfortable because all your muscles are warmed up. So, Makes I sense. mean, naturally, yeah, naturally, you know, when you go on stage, even when it's, uh, colder when you start moving around I mean we're really kind of you know we're playing metal rock so the music's more high energy so your body automatically kind of warms up so that makes it easier to sing it's definitely not a good idea like um for me it's harder to sing if it's early morning when it's really cold and mm -hmm. I'm not warmed up then yeah just like with anything it's like you're an athlete you know if your body's cold it's much harder to yeah. do your um yeah, tricks. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, do you do like any uh, special kind of warm ups and stuff before you go on stage? I should. <laughs> <laughs> it's so That's hard like, to do. I don't blame you. It's like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. I'd rather just sing something. <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just so, so much things have to get done. That's true. Uh, especially because you. It's a lot of the time you don't use your own gear, so the setup is a little more quicker. Uh, you have to get used to the new gear, the new stage. I mean, obviously, on your tour, it's stage different, but you bring your own gear, so you kind of know what to expect and how to set up. So it's always kind of a hectic, um, even on tour. Like I always think, oh, I'm gonna go on tour. We're just performing in the evening. I have a whole day to. I don't know, write a novel or whatever else I want to do. Yeah. But it's kind of hard because you're tired after the shows. So you try to sleep as much. You know, you get up in the morning, you're in the venue, and you try to get some food, try to get coffee, go outside, breathe a little bit, and then you start having sound check. Then, there, then you have to start setting up. Then the merch, um, you know, make sure everything is set up on that. And if you have mm -hmm. a meet and greet, get prepared for that so everything just starts happening really fast then you have to get ready uh you know with us like i always wear stage clothes so it takes me a little bit to get ready even though i'm i'm pretty fast now how, how fast <laughs> but, do you get it done how fast do you get ready yeah oh man i can get it done in like five minutes honestly in the back <gasps> of the car all that stuff <laughs> really <laughs> 
change though. The hard thing is I usually put my hair up in a ponytail. I used to just keep my hair down, but um, it started to happen where my hair would always get caught on some guitar or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have put it back in the ponytail now that way it keeps it out of my face and you know, less chances of it getting caught mm. in someone else <laughs> so, so if you have long me. hair everyone put it in a ponytail that's actually a really good advice like while you're getting ready put it in a ponytail even even for guys that have long hair you know how many times I've accidentally gotten my hair caught in someone's we'll be on stage and their hair gets caught in my guitar and then we have to like do that awkward like let's hurry up and like kind of snap it off because you can't get it off <laughs> have you had that happen to you i did yes it did happen and it happened on stage but i will say i've i've witnessed a lot of guys who spend way more time on their hair than i do, <laughs> so. <laughs> what do you, so what is the move you do because i remember my buddy luis he was singing and he went like that i was right behind him and the hair got on there and we were literally like lodged and we just did the whole like it's uh you know when you have like a, a band-aid on you just tear it off we're just like wham and like i had a chunk of hair how do you detach from it when that happens <laughs> do that that's do why that. i tried because <laughs> uh. what are you gonna do oh wait everybody let me see what happened yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like hold the show <laughs> just take it <laughs> off yeah uh so do you have like rules for your band members? You're like, hey, you can't get this close to me. Like, this is how far you got to stay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that kind of a diva. But <laughs> no. Um, I have rules. <laughs> no, actually, we don't. I mean, I'm pretty lucky. They're all really cool guys. And yeah. we try to. Actually, I'm grateful because sometimes I do trip over things and mm. I'm able to not fall either like, you know, hold myself off of someone or they would like go like this. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Give you a little boost up. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, That's good. So so you don't have so you don't have your own set of rules for shows like for everybody. There's no like, uh, hey, this is what we're going to do um, or like for the sound people or for equipment people. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a rule. Make sure your amp doesn't blow up. Make <laughs> sure your guitar turn on fire. <laughs> I, mean, um, I have a sound guy, Brendan, that um, goes with us everywhere now. And he made our life just um, brought everything up a notch. So I feel like <laughs> he has to deal with everything now. Mm. But uh, you know, so far, uh, we... Yeah, I mean, uh, we have everything sort of our setup locked in because we've already done a few tours and we have a good system going now. So, yeah, before we get to the venue, we send everything to the venue that we need or they expect us to have or, you know, what's going to be going on, the setup we're going to have. So everything's kind of um, thought through in advance. But then still, even um, when we show up, you know, there's still that hectic notion of getting everything yeah. set up make sure it works because also sometimes when you have a lot of wireless stuff sometimes there's interference you know there's like oh i just hear a radio and then you hear voices and you don't know where the voices are coming oh, from wow. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a lot of different aspects of everything um you know and then always something like you know like something doesn't work and you gotta troubleshoot so yep. there's always like backup plans yeah, Emotion. I feel so bad for Maria because she's just sitting there watching me have a panic attack before the stream started. I was like, this is the most embarrassing thing ever. I mean, guys, we how many times we start the computer before we started? Like five times. And I'm like, I was like telling her, I just did a stream a few hours ago. Flawless, worked perfectly, you know, and I, my phone decided not to not to be my camera anymore. <laughs> They have updates for it because that happens a lot. They every time they update something, especially Apple, you gotta update everything. You do. Yeah. So, the issues, but no worries. Hey, technology. It's great when it works, but when it doesn't, we um, roll with it. This is fun. Doesn't so. it? Doesn't it feel like technology just has like ghost things that don't work? Like it works 
perfectly, even if there's no updates or nothing. And they're like, oh, it just, this app's going to decide not to work today. No clue why. <laughs> why well, I'm kind of nervous, right? When, you know, our technology is evol evolving and self-driving cars. Next, we're going to have, there's actually a flying car that got approved. It's what? Obviously a flying car? <laughs> Yeah, if um, it's actually, I believe the makers um, forget the name, but if you Google flying car, the first flying car to get approved for, um, like, basically it can go in flight now. Mm -hmm. So it looks really cool. It actually flies sideways. Check it out. It's pretty interesting. But I'm saying, like, we rely on technology so much, it always kind of makes me nervous, mm. right? Well, I mean, like a I mean, you drive a spaceship everywhere. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> I, I don't let the drive itself. <laughs> That's true. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. You guys drive it yourself. <laughs> it's not self-driving. So, so it's confirmed your spaceship is not self-driving whatsoever. Yeah, I drive it. Well, they switch. <laughs> You switch. <laughs> How many hours do you drive for? Uh, I let the guys drive. I just watch. <laughs> you just watch. <laughs> so how many on tour, how many people do you have as a team? You have the band, you have the sound guy. Yes. Um, so it's five of us in the band plus Brandon, our front of house, then uh, whoever is going with uh, helping us do merch. So we're lucky we have um, the support system, everybody's girlfriends are always willing to help as well. So, um, you know, we always have a fun time on the road and it just depends how many people go to how many shows, but there's at least uh, seven people, seven to eight people that travel okay. for the tours. Yeah, I'm, I'm going on a tour in three weeks, but I'm going to be the uh, merch, the sound guy, and I'm uh, everything guy. The tech, everything, <laughs> everything <laughs> helps. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the next tour I'm in, uh, in a band playing. That's that's the goal. Like I was like, this one just to get, get back out on the road. It's been a while for me, probably since the pandemic, because I was doing tours with various bands. I would just like fill on guitar or I would be in the band or whatnot. But this time I was like, you know what? I just need to get back out on the road. I miss it. And then I got hired for this band, so I'm gonna literally do everything. And right now, they're great, band, so I'm happy to hear that. That's awesome. What'd you say? I'm sorry, say it again. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're getting back out there. Yeah. On the road. Yeah, I, I I love performing. I love performing most of all, but uh, it'll come in time. In time, I'm hoping to get back out there and start playing again. But um, yeah. What, after COVID, we didn't play for so long, so. We were kind of getting nervous, you know, when everything's going to come back. Uh, so I'm just happy that things are, you know, back <laughs> full yeah. force. Yeah. And so this is, you've done, since the pandemic, this is your, you're going to be going on your second tour already? Uh, no, actually third, because third. first the tour we did after the pandemic was a UK tour with Temperance. And we That's did right. a few shows like that. So yeah, we did the UK run, then uh, we came back, we did the cruise, we, we did Lacuna Coil, um, now we're doing the other one. So yeah, not, I mean, we, uh, I think next year is going to be even busier for us, but yeah, we were nervous to do the UK run because um, some places were still kind of affected by COVID and um, nobody knew for sure like if people are coming out or not coming out but um it was really good so i'm happy everything turned out good because i believe there was a certain period of time where things sort of opened but then like are they gonna close like, yeah <laughs> so oh to, yeah that's gotta was, that's gotta be nerve-wracking yeah. now for people was, that go ahead sorry i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut uh, you off no no go ahead yeah it's like the camera's like skipping a lot i'm not sure um, it kept like dipping out. What was that last part that you said? It kept like cutting in and out. Oh, no, I was just saying it was a bit nerve wracking because, you know, when you go on tour, there's so much stuff that's in preparation. Mm -hmm. So we were nervous or nothing goes to back to the lockdown. <laughs> Cause I remember that time where everybody's like, Oh, there's a new variant. There's that yeah. new variant. So oh yeah. 
That would be scary, right? You're on tour and they're just like, oh, we're shutting everything down again. Yeah, and then you're stuck with the tour bus, you're stuck with all the merch, you don't know where, you know, it's like, what do you do? It's crazy. So for those who don't know that are watching, what is what is the most helpful for a band out on the road when you're going to support a band? Uh, buy the merch. Buy the merch. <laughs> I, 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 know, I knew it was going to be the merch thing, but... Like, is there anything specifically that you're like, hey, this is how you would help out the band the most, it, like merch wise? Because I know there's a lot of stuff that goes behind, like with the T-shirts and like you have a certain margin that goes on certain items, right? Yeah. Oh, you mean like uh, the cost of the Yeah. Yeah. Shirts? Like how, you, how do you guys do it to keep everything like even and tight for your budget when you guys are going on tour? Because you guys are doing everything yourself, right? Uh, well, we have a management company that they help out a lot. Oh, okay. Uh, so that help, yeah, just coordinating things and um, hooking up with different merch companies that also help you to um, kind of guess how much you're going to sell because there's sort of formula for the venues you play, mm -hmm. the number of tickets. Um, so we're able to sort of budget that and know how much to print. Um, sizes are hard to guess sometimes, but merch companies, they have their own formula where they can really help you to know how and what areas, what sizes sell more. So it can be kind of prepared because before I could never guess, you know, you order t-shirts, you're like, I'll get like 100 XLs, 200 Ls, like you never know. And then you're yeah. left with one size sold out you don't have any anymore so that's always kind of hard but yeah so we've been lucky to work with merch companies that kind of help us uh with that and uh you know just kind of keep all the art files and run out um you know they're able to restock you quickly so do you yeah. have any recommendations yeah Constantly. definitely that that's a really good point i remember there was um there was a merch uh uh merchant that i had before pandemic and he did the one of the coolest things he's like hey wh where what city are you in and then he like planned it out and we ran out like while we were there because we ran out of like i think it was xls or something and he's like i'll ship it to this city it'll get there in two days i'm like you're the best <laughs> and like it actually got there in time we were nervous i i luckily had a friend in austin or something i'm like hey just ship it to this address in austin and then we like picked it up on the way there it was insane well, I have to give a shout out to um, John Dove, who supported us. He's a big music supporter. Because on the last Look on the Coil tour, we sold out of CDs and we had uh, some sh um, shows left. And he uh, had like a collection of our CDs and he just shipped it to us. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> so, That's cool. And he saved us. So thank you, John. We that won't put you in that again. We will be stocked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta that's gotta feel awful when you run out of cds but great at the same time like it's so great you sell them all but at the same time you're like damn i don't have any more to sell <laughs> i know i know so but i i i tried to make a lot of artwork as well um we had a lot of necklaces um i had canvas art canvas prints so we had a lot of diverse merchandise so i'm trying to make some mini artworks for this tour as well mm. um so yeah you want to show some of the artwork you said he has some stuff to show i actually posted today uh it's these two pieces so i'm making a piece for each song on the album um i already made i think five now and this one is for the basilisk which is the music video i sent you today yes that's probably the, that's the song I think I'm thinking about where you go super high with the vocals. Yeah, so this is so this is kind of depicting um, in this album we have a storyline that goes along with it. So he's the leader of this uh, mm. super advanced, the faceless, and uh, yeah, because we're gonna release a graphic novel next year. But I'm kind of putting a little bit of the themes that go with the story in these paintings. And this one is for the song called Another Life. Um, so you kind of see the faceless here and and there's like this cybernetic thing going on and he is standing um, wow. in the middle. 
time and there's like the sci-fi city in the background and uh, uh yeah so that's this one is for another life that looks I got beautiful spray. thank you yeah because this is glass and it keeps falling so i, I usually like do lacquer over it so it kind oh, of okay. seals everything how long does it take for you to do one of those? Um, well, I guess it depends how much at a time I'm working on it, but I would say about a week. I would, I keep every day I go back to it and I add, you know, more and more mm. to it. But over a week, I'm able to get it done. That's so, so. cool. That's awesome. It looks great. It, and well, for those who are wondering how much she sells for, if, in case somebody wants to buy one. So these ones are 200 for, so the ones for the album are already sold. Um, mm. Every um, art is also available in a canvas print, and those are much less, of course. But um, people can also get smaller original art canvases, like smaller ones that are um, 70, they're like yeah. this big. The big pieces, around 150. Uh, so yeah. And your, is your guys' I, a website, um, you still have your .com, right? Edgeofparadise.com? Uh, it's edgeofparadiseband.com. Mm -hmm. Edgeofparadiseband.com. I'll put in the link uh, for you guys. I'll put the link in the chat for you guys right now. I'm pinning on the comments if you guys are curious to check that out. If you're listening from Spotify, you can um, type that in, edgeofparadiseband.com. Check out the all the merch. And the cool thing that I really love about you doing that is that it has the ones that you make from scratch that – uh, what's cool about it is that all of them are going to be different. So even if you order it, it's not going to be same as somebody else who gets it, which I think is really cool. Especially after yeah, you guys yeah, get, every... especially when you guys grow as a band and get much bigger and bigger, like those those pieces are going to like just mean more for them. You know, We're like I have this unique piece that that you did. I have um, an agreement, guys. Once we get to the point where you can sell it on eBay for a million. Have <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. So out of the so, so with the tour with Dragon Force, how did that all come about? Um. So, uh, I believe Herman knew of us from the cruise. Um, he's managed. He manages the band. Uh, so, um, I, I'm not sure, but. I just know that our booking agent, Dan Rosenblum, um, had the offer and we obviously accepted because Dragon Force is awesome and that kind of how it came about. But I think it's um, because we um, kind of crossed paths on the cruise. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I'll ask yeah. Him. <laughs> I mean, that's really important. It's like uh, we were just literally talking about this on the podcast uh, about the importance of just like getting out there, you know, um, and doing things like as a musician or artist. Sometimes it takes just getting out there or doing something, even if it's making YouTube videos or stuff like that, or just like getting out and talking to people or like crossing paths, or, like playing in bands and stuff like that. You never know what could happen, right? Like you said, you just happened to be on that cruise. They were there. They heard you. They liked you. And then, bam, you know, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's, um, you know, it's not an easy path. I feel like there's definitely more, um, how do you say it? I don't want to say disappointments, but you can have, like, an expectation, right, that something – is going to become overnight because I, I really think that there's no such thing as an overnight success. It might appear like that, mm -hmm. but you never know all the years, all the hard work behind it Yeah, because they just have to work on, uh, you know, doing this because you love it and just being the best version of whatever you're creating and just keep believing it and keep, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And then things kind of, Happen, but I feel like if um, you know if you're expecting too much or forcing something, it never really ends up well. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so you know, I'm trying to do this myself, but just really um, enjoy the moment, enjoy what's happening, enjoy the shows you're doing. Because I'm kind of guilty of always thinking what's next, mm -hmm. always thinking what what is the next thing we can do. 
um, thinking like way ahead、mm. and then time flies so much. And then you kind of think back that, oh, I've done a lot of this stuff and I wish I could just kind of take in the moment a little more because、mm. at the time it's kind of stressful. You're thinking of that and this and that. So I, I've kind of learned to just take it in a little more and just be really grateful for,、um, you know. That you're able to just kind of share the music with people and,、mm-hmm. you know, no code, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. I, it's, it's so true, though. It, just trying to savor the moment. Like for me, I haven't even taken, like you're saying about the baby metal stuff, I haven't really taken a moment yet to really、uh, let it in, <laughs> you know? And it's、uh, kind of crazy that that happened just because of the magnitude of it or like the fact that it could possibly even happen, you know? And, um, or like going from reaction stuff content and doing interviews with you and other band members and like go, getting back out and playing. And just like you said, all the work that goes behind it is, is insane. It's, in, it's an insane amount of work when you think about it, when you actually think about it. You don't think about it as it's happening because you're just, you're just doing your thing, having fun and, uh, going at it. And then all of a sudden, uh, you're, you're where you're at, you know? Is, and for you, you started, You started on piano, right? Yeah, yeah, that was、yeah. my thing is classical piano.、Um, I did that. I did a lot of theater.、Um, so, yeah, I think I never really expected to be in a band, let alone a rock metal band. But、yeah. now, kind of looking back, everything sort of happened for a reason, I feel like, in my life, because everything that all the skills I acquired. I'm able to use and grow within the band.、Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a perfect thing for me because everything I do, I really love it. And if I focused on one thing, like when I moved to LA, I did some acting here and there, and then you always rely on others. It's not really your ideas. You're kind of at the mercy of somebody else's ideas. And、mm-hmm. all of I love creating, and this kind of gives me the outlet to do that. And yeah. Also, make videos and just kind of utilize all channels of expression. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah, you're just, yeah, you're like how I am. You just do as much as possible, like just learning random like skills, but they all come together, not random. They, they end up being skills that mold into one. So, you said you tried acting. How did that transcribe over? I mean, with doing the music videos, did it help you with your storytelling or what, did, what exactly did you do when you were doing acting? Um, well, I went to, I was, ever since I started, so、um, take it way back.、Yeah. My mom, when,、uh, so we moved, I was born in Armenia, we moved to Moscow. And my mom taught English at a performing arts school. And she would take me with her. And while she was working, I would take all these classes. So I would do dance, I would do music. I would do theater. So I was in place since I was like four years old.、Mm-hmm. So I really developed love for performing arts. So ever since that, I was always in that kind of environment. I was always in dance, always in theater.、Uh, piano was a big thing for me because I practiced a lot. You do the, you know, in Russia, like the school was really serious because you have to take exams,、mm. you have to do practices. Like it's, You know, <laughs> yeah, I remember I love science, and、uh, you can see some of those themes in our songs, yeah, obviously, all the stuff too. But, um, yeah, ever since that, I feel like it gave me the tools to be able to, um, I guess, create large because I love to, like, with the songs, we create kind of larger than life ideas, right?、Mm-hmm. The songs you. They're rooted in kind of really human emotion. The settings are、um, a bit, you know, out of this world <laughs> because、yeah. I really love that stuff. And I feel like it kind of gives me that outlet to be something else, right? Be a、yeah. character in that.、Uh, it's almost like escape of re- from reality, right?、Yeah. Creating this world. Maybe it's something that I always lo-、mm-hmm. wanted to do anyway, gravitated to acting. And that's why it feels so natural. To make songs like that in the band. But yeah, it also kind of gives me tools. Like when we make music videos, I guess ideas subconsciously, I'm able to come up with them because of the background. 
I don't know. But mm. I'm just glad that all of that, so I'm able to kind of make it happen if I kind of get the idea in my head, kind of know how to yeah. go about it. Meeting amazing people, fellow artists you know, along the way that kind of take your ideas and uh, put it into reality. Yeah. Um, that's all as well. So I think it's important. And, and another thing I learned is kind of learn to let go a little bit and let other people um, really add uh, to what your vision is because it only makes it, um, you know, more diverse and more uh, bigger. And uh, yeah, I, I that's just collaborating with other people's ideas. And you collaborate with all the band members in the band for the songs? <laughs> I don't know if they, um, well, yeah, I mean, we do. Like, we recorded actually this last album, first album where we were all in the studio making it together. Because That's before cool. it was made, Dave and I, and then like Dave played bass on it before. Um, like, we had other musicians sometimes record uh, because we. We were changing lineups or whatever it may have been. But this is the first album where it's this lineup, it's this album that we were all there, we made. But um, I guess like the ideas come from me and then they're like, you're crazy. But then they have to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. that that is awesome. But, it, so you guys had a lot of different lineups before you guys actually got together. Do you, you know, for people that are trying to do music for a living, would you recommend them to try to look outside of their city when doing music, maybe to get something official going? Outside of their city, like to find members? Yeah, yeah, to find members. Because a lot of bands I mean, get I stuck trying to find members in their city, and I know personally from playing here in El Paso, it's almost impossible. Like, I've noticed that I've had more success working with musicians outside, outside of the city, you know, making recordings yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and a lot of bands, they, like take Dragon Force, for example, they live in different parts of the world, but, you know, they're at that level where they can get together, you know, mm -hmm. rehearse and then go on tour. And then, you know, with technology these days, it's easy to maybe collaborate on music virtually. Mm -hmm. um, like for us, I can't really imagine right now if we all lived in different parts of the world because we rehearse a lot. Mm -hmm. And I feel part of our band, like when we make record, yeah, it's one thing. It's nice to all be together. Um, but then, you know, our music is a little bit more, I guess. Uh, yeah, everybody's music is different. Ours requires us to figure out how to make it sound mm -hmm. good live because we have a lot of layers on the recording. Yeah. So it's a process, figuring out who's playing what, uh, which lay, you know, it's, it's just a process. So we get together a lot. Um, but I would say, yeah, if you are in an area where you feel like you're limited, then it shouldn't stop you to look somewhere else because you never know. Somewhere yeah. else, you might find someone who's willing to even move somewhere, yeah. right? You never know. I'm that person uh, that's willing to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go wherever. Somebody's like, hey, we need someone here. All right, I'll be there. Uh, that's what happened with this tour. You're like, oh, would you come to Denver? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah, that that's a good point. I I thought I, I remember in the past you you did have members that were kind of far apart. So now you guys all live together, or like, well, not live together, but you guys are all in the same area now. Did any of those members move? Is that what happened, or you guys got members that were closer? No, I mean, we, uh, yeah, the I mean, before, well, technically, we're still a little bit spread out, but yeah, yeah. it's easy enough when we have to. But uh, no, before, I don't know, I think it was uh, some other issues, like some, maybe someone had uh, a, a family that they couldn't commit to touring a lot mm. or something. That, never know people's life circumstances. Yeah. And also, um, it, it does take a bit of time to really find someone that you click with in a way. Yeah. Um, to be in a band, like you have to understand what the goals are to sort of be make yourself available to reach those goals together. Because if one person is working really hard, but another person, you know, that's not their priority, then 
it becomes tougher to move the whole thing forward. So oh, that's that, the hard. That is, yeah. yeah you're speaking facts. <laughs> I didn't know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, that was like main issues with uh, Dicotic as a band, 100. percent It was always just like one person or two people doing stuff, you know. So, which is Eric and I, which a lot of people already know here. We've had <laughs> those issues or whatnot, but yeah. I can totally see that yeah. happening. It doesn't work because you end up feeling, um, you end up feeling like you, you think you can do it. Cause I, I've been in this state. Let me know if you resonate with this. There was one po point where I was like, screw it. I'll just do it myself and I got to make it happen and not rely on other people. But then two years, three years later, you just start feeling worn out. And you're like, damn, I'm the only one doing stuff to make this happen. And why do I keep settling, you know, for the people around? Have you ever had that happen to you? Um, well, I mean, I do have to say, like, from the beginning, it was mainly Dave and I doing everything. Just yeah. because a part of it, maybe we didn't have the right people in the group, or maybe we didn't have people with that uh, understood the gravity of what we were trying to do. Um, I mean, I never really felt because I kind of always approached it like I know what's up to me, and I guess I have oh, okay. that personality but that I want to rely on myself to get something done. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I would still feel a little bit weird if, yeah, you're doing all this stuff, but then you have members in the band that are kind of just there to reap the benefit. I mean, honestly, like we. We always had really good people in the band. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's always something where someone's doing more than others. But I think also knowing what the roles of each person is. Yes. Um, yeah. Is, yeah, it makes the expectations there. So, like, for example, even right now, like, honestly, I wouldn't say that we're all doing something equally. Like, they're not painting. I am. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's an agreement, though. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. I unfortunately had the issue where, like, members would be like, hey, all we care is if you, like, practice and learn the songs, and that was it. And, like, that's all we, like, we would have those, like, stipulations. But then you have those members that are like, I'm not going to practice <laughs> or do the thing. We're like, that's all you have to do. <laughs> you know? Yeah, past the level you have to get at. I mean, yeah. obviously, that wouldn't work. So yeah. I'm grateful for the members we have now. Like, I yeah. want to mention them. Like, Dave, well, obviously, Dave. Dave yeah. Bates. And we have David, who's also our, our guitarist. He's been with us. I, you know, he's basically the founding member as well because he's been us for so long. Yeah. Uh, and then we have our drummer, who's a little newer. He's Colombian, and we love him. And then we have Kenny on bass, who is the newest member. I mean, relatively, he's been with us for quite a bit of time now. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we all kind of have our roles to fill. Yeah. Um, I also feel like it doesn't necessarily work if everybody is guiding the ship or everybody is yes. doing... Uh, yeah. ...butting heads, then... I feel like you really have to find that balance yeah. of who what and um and then have an open line of con you know open communication because that's also really important right because mm -hmm. it's a business um it's also art because there's a lot of emotion involved in a way because you're creating art together mm -hmm. and you're passionate about it so I feel like being in a band is like always that delicate line because you have to have a strong head on your shoulders, right? Yep. That you kind of business minded, do things for the business. Yeah. And then you kind of be open enough to really connect with people on a bigger level because you're creating arts together. That's hopefully really meaningful to you. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, yeah, exactly. I completely agree with you. 100%. You can have a bunch of people, um, like headlining, you know. So who who runs this ship mainly, uh, Edge of Paradise? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Okay, we'll, well keep now, we'll keep it we'll keep it a secret. Nobody will know. <laughs> like I, I I guess I get the ideas right. So yeah. I have the idea songs. I kind of come up with my big whatever uh, spaceship ideas, right? Yeah. They already know me. 
already know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and we all uh, basically come together to make it happen. Uh, we're lucky now that we have management and booking that can help us on that aspect because yes. before wearing everything yourself, it's a lot more stressful because you're wearing more hats. And now we can butt heads less because there's also other business partners, right? That are making yep. uh, you make decisions. That's and a then, really uh, that. <laughs> that's a really good point. That is such a good point. I think that's missed. And that's, a, I'm so happy you brought that up. When you have somebody else handling the business side of things a little bit more, not only does it help everyone just feel relieved, you know, they can focus on the creative side, you know, because it is difficult to manage the business and creative side all at once. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to a point, in a way, you still kind of have to be in charge of your own destiny in a way, but you yeah. have people helping you get there. Um, but yes, like, it's, you know, it's frustrating a little bit because when you're starting a band, it, it's a bit of a catch-22 because mm -hmm. to be able to get management and get booking and get a label yep. and all that stuff, Right. Nobody uh, these days, nobody just kind of takes chances on you anymore. Yeah. I feel like so a lot falls on you. That's why I feel like you really have to love what you're doing and really believe in it. So you kind of build it yourself to the point where other people want to get involved. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's the love that drives it. Right. Yeah. So. You got to take the chance on yourself. It's it's such a good point, you know. Yeah, obviously, yeah. None of the business stuff is always gonna go away. You know, there's always gonna be that little part of it. It's just um, it's it always reminds me because I I don't know if you're right. I've said this before. I, I've been in the restaurant business, so I, it's it's very similar to that. Uh, when I was a DM running stores, it's like imagine it's every store is like a little band. It's like the same kind of concept, you know, and it's just, it, it happens in a band also or a YouTube channel or anything. It, all this stuff requires a lot of people and organization and managing. So, and it, cause otherwise if you don't, you're going to go insane. You need help to do it. And it really impresses me when some of these people do it on their own. Um, I've seen some YouTubers that will do this business like on their own and, somehow get so far but sometimes they stress out you know they 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 will break down you know yeah yeah that's the thing you kind of have to decide right the sacrifices you make yeah that's where um i never understood it when i was younger but you get into, stuck to that thing where you're trying to do everything you're just trying to do everything i remember there's a point where i was in like five bands running youtube uh, this is when I was trying to do the YouTube career. I was a DM at Carl's Jr. I, I, to this day, I have no clue how I did all that stuff at once. It was insane. I was like, how was I going on tour, running businesses and doing all this? I was like, what was I doing? Like now when I think about it, I'm like, there's no way I can do that again. I, I'm like dying doing what I'm doing now. And it's, all, I had, I quit everything. Literally. I remember one day I was like, I'm just going to quit everything. And I still haven't really done that all the way either. Is there still like a few things like, all right, all right, I got to hold on to the things that really matter or like are going to actually excel you further. And I'm curious for you, have you ever been in that trap where you're just doing way too much all at once? You've had to make oh, that decision? Yeah. yeah, I guess still am. And I'm <laughs> no, I'm um, I mean, when we started the band, I feel like I did try to do too many things at once. But then you know, they also say you try to chase too many rabbits or whatever that saying is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I was focused on one goal, but um, that's why I think it's important to um, not have such high expectations. Or I don't know what to do. I feel like that it's important to just focus on something that's important for you for that moment and kind of give it your all and maybe it comes with age right it comes with maturity mm -hmm. to be able to um kind of focus your attention um at certain things more than others right yeah. I, spend your time wisely i guess but also if you don't stress out that's a big thing because i yeah. feel like when I would stress out about things and then 
it kind of gets to the point where you don't even know where to start right? mm -hmm. because you just kind of I got so much things to handle yeah um kind of keep your mind more calm and just you know I'm still learning how to do that but <laughs> I feel you on that <laughs> yeah I feel like that helps like do something today whatever else you feel like you have to do it can wait till tomorrow mm -hmm. um that way both those things will get done right yeah. because I think I've, I've been in situations where now looking back I wish I would have focused maybe on one thing more than the other um because you know once you do something you do it and it's out there yep so rough. yeah but, it's have you um how do you guys handle like as a band those stressful situations do you guys have like a plan in place where you guys do or i know for instance like the tour i'm going on uh, we all have this agreement like hey let's make sure we say what's bothering us right away and not hold it against each other you know because it'll be the first time of all of us meeting go on tour we did like the interview process and stuff like that how do you guys handle stuff like that <laughs> well we don't hold back we go at a full force. I think that's the best way, honestly. <laughs> the Gaijin guys, um, you know, this YouTube channel, I'm so appreciative because we all work as a team, but we do the same thing behind the scenes. We just go at it. Yeah, it's like, what do you, I mean, you know, sometimes uh, maybe that upsets someone, right? Yeah. That no way that's it, it's handled. I don't know. I, I feel like that's part of finding people that you gel with. Right. Yeah. Because comfort to be able to address what's bothering you or what's that. But I feel like when we're on tour, there's so many issues that we all kind of have to focus on that. Yeah. And uh, we always have fun together, too. Yeah. Obviously, there are some moments to work through some things. Um, yeah. But overall, it's important to not... I mean, I feel like it's like in any relationship, right? If you hold yeah. something in, it's bothering yeah. you, it's going to destroy whatever is going on anyway. So it's better to talk about it and yeah. not let it get out of Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, I appreciate you like talking about all this stuff. I'm sure uh, the audience like, like just to get that behind the scenes, you know, like what happens in a band? Like how much is behind it? So, you know, when you guys are out there, like listening to your favorite bands and stuff, you know, I want you guys to have another level of appreciation, like, because this goes on with a lot of bands and groups all together. There's so many things that happen. We've witnessed so many bands break up, they're split up, uh, especially in the Japanese music scene. And of course, uh, music scenes everywhere um, where members leave, do different things. There's so many variables that could happen that we just don't know and that happen behind the scenes, you know. So I appreciate you like yeah. talking about it. Thank you. Yeah, that's why I always have a lot of respect for anybody that's in any art field. Because I mean, I guess um, no, um, nothing that nothing is easy, right? That you're trying to build from scratch, basically. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of sacrifices. So yeah, I have a lot of respect for people that kind of take a chance on themselves and just build something and. Um, believe in it but yeah you know that. that's why i never understand how people can just comment something bad on some other person's art to work like you know i don't like it you don't like it. you don't have to say it but <laughs> yeah um, yep. oh, like, i've been guilty I'm, of it unfortunately <laughs> but you take a step back and you're like uh okay <laughs> this sucks <laughs> not like that no 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 i i've been guilty of it in reactions i've actually had to put out video saying you know what? i apologize i wasn't thinking i was talking off the cuff and didn't you know think before i said those words you know but i think but in, the, in that regard though, like i feel like it's also important not to be uh, like i feel like you have to have a thick skin in a way and just mm -hmm. kind of accept everybody's gonna like it so um, I don't feel like if you do reaction videos, right, you don't have to feel like you can't say something that you feel mm -hmm. or you, but I feel like there is a respectful way to say it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That, but everybody's entitled to their opinion. No, that's why there's so much in this world, right? Yeah. There's always some 
I'm not gonna like. I don't like a lot of things, but yeah. um, I'm allowed to. So does every, everybody else. You know, yeah. I'm not expecting our music. You have to like um, everything, okay? And you all have to like Edge of Paradise. And you need to go subscribe to your channel right now. You have no choice. <laughs> Just kidding. Or we send the um, Tie Fighters after you. <laughs> yeah, she'll send all the fighters over to you. Oh. Well, hey, tell everyone about what you guys got going on. I know we have you have the tour coming out. Um, do you have the dates listed anywhere? Yeah, so the dates are listed. I mean, pretty much everywhere. If you uh, want to see if the show is coming next to your area, just type in Dragon Force Tour or Edge of Paradise Tour, and the dates will come up. It's also on our website, edgeofparadiseband.com. Uh, yep. It's on our Facebook cover. Um, so yeah, you can pretty much find it. If you just type in our name and if you're coming to our show, we would love to see you. And uh, we also have meet and greet um, events at every show. And the cool thing about meet and greet is it's before the doors open. So you have that time to kind of meet everybody and hang out together. Uh, and this time we're going to give out USB drives of um, content that's not released. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's some behind the scenes like that's not released. Um, so, you know, people that attend our meet and greets will get that. Plus, they get signed poster. We take Polaroid photos. That is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Fun. I like that. Yeah, guys, that's the link right there that I just put in the chat for um, the website. And you guys can get all of it. All of this on there. You click on tour on the very top. Again, everyone, I'm so sorry about this setup today. I, I swear, I don't know what happened. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to let everybody know? Well, I just want to say thank you. Um, if you're in um, any of these parts, yeah, just um, hopefully we'll see you at the show. If not, we'll be touring a lot uh, next year as well. Um, yeah. And feel free to, we're a very social band, so always feel free to leave us a comment or, you know, join us on any social media sites. Um, I'd love to have, you know, we're kind of building the community of Edge of Paradise and it's always awesome to, um, you know, meet new people or run into people that we've known for years, you know, at the shows. It's just a great feeling. So, yeah, just thank you, everybody. Hell and, yeah. Follow us on Spotify. There. Yep. Do it now. And you have to like it. We have to hit the like button. I'm just kidding, everyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys have a good one, right? See you guys in the next one. See you uh, Sunday. See you. It was so much better.